Welcome back to the Compound Podcast. This is episode 203, 203 of the Compound Podcast, presented by Connect Roasters, connectroasters.com, to get all of your coffee needs. We got all kinds of roasts. We got Guatemala. We got Honduras. We got Nicaragua. We got all of them under the sun. We got two codes. Code Compound Club for 25% off your first order of the Home Run Club. And we got code Compound 15 for 15% off site-wide. Do you want to try a bag of coffee? Compound 15. Give it a try. Try it out. You're going to love it. That's connectroasters.com. That's, people, that's, that's your best read. Feel good about it. People are saying that the Home Run Club is going to get activated this week. I said it to Ian three times today. I go, hey, man. Like we got to get on the board. We got to get one out there. You know, it was tough. I was in San Diego, had an at bat, hit a ball, about 15 feet foul, homer. Felt good about it. Next pitch, punch my ticket. A little bit up, a little bit up, a little bit out of the zone. Ticket. it. Uh, I don't. I don't know the time that I hit a foul home run. And the at bat ended successfully for me, <laughs> dude. And then later that game, Cronenworth hits a foul homer, like launched and like close foul homer. Has a great at bat. I don't know, 10, 12 pitches, and then hits a homer to finish it. It was pretty impressive. Well, that's see, like that's like too almost hard to believe. Like that's like if you were to bring that into a movie director, like no, it's not. It's too unrealistic. <laughs> he had he had real good at bats. That's serious. Um, wait, really quick. Speaking of pitches, close pitches. Up, oh, you said. Do you guys not have the uh, the K zone nobody's, anymore on the iPad? Got the box. Nobody's got the box, dude. We uh, opening week. Well, can we you were explain? At it. Can you explain what you guys are talking yeah, about? Yeah. So, it, in the past, past, um, I don't know what year it started. They would have the live right in. You can attest, like you right after this? you're at bat, you could come in and look on the iPad and see where the pitch was, and right. then. Umpires were like, can't have that. Guys are standing there with the iPad. To, like, to, hey, be, I fair, told you. to be fair to the umps. I, yeah, I, no, I see that. I see dude, that. <laughs> there's times now where I'm like, I, we got to pump the brakes on that a little bit. Um, and then so in the last two or three years, however long, you know, that I've seen it, it's been delayed by an inning to where you can see the TV broadcast. And then that would have the K zone on there. or the, the box is what we call it. And this year. I had no idea, but like one of the first days I look at the iPad, I'm like, oh man, they must have not put it up yet. And then like it kept happening. And then I, you know, put two and two together. I was like, wow, they must have took away the box after every every inning. Does that thing show like I think it's whatever's on TV? No, no. Oh, okay. I was gonna say, does it show like you know on Ivy how it would show like strike percentage? Like it doesn't show like that. Like, oh, like this is a 10% strike call. No, no, it's the exact same box as you would see on TV. So it's the broadcast feed, the same as you'd see on TV. Zach, let me ask you a question about it. Do you think it makes it harder to do your job when you come back from a bat and you you have the four hundred foot away camera on a side angle without the box? Do you think it's harder for you to do your job without the K zone boxes you would see on TV? It is tough because there is sometimes where it's like you have validation, like, all right, I screwed up or, you know, it was a ball like, Hey, maybe I'm really not seeing it. Or I'm like, man, I knew that was a strike or a ball. Like I, I knew. Um, yeah, it is tough. Uh, I, I totally understand why they did it though. Like I get it, but it does suck. It's, it's tough. Like guys, you know, they come back like, look at this. This is a strike. And I'm like, how, how, how do you, how do you know if it's a strike? <laughs> like, I, well, I, I completely agree. I just think like the box is a good barometer for us and, I, like, yeah. being able to go back in and see, like, I took that pitch. Like I, I had a strike three called on me the other day. It was a ball or two up out of the zone after that foul homer. And I felt like it was a ball. I felt like it was out of the zone. And you can't look until after the game to get that validation that it was up. And so, you know, if you're facing the starting pitcher, we're facing Darvish, Musgrove, Cease the last couple of days. And they're throwing, you know, they're throwing sliders, spinning at 28, 2900, and just getting a gauge for like, all right, that's a couple inches off the inside corner. Like I swung at it. But now I know that like that's off the edge. Like that's a ball. I need to take that pitch or like something gets called. And 
then you go back and the box isn't there and you can't tell like is that on the corner is that off in like should i take that should i not so when you go back for your second at bat it's hard to get that gauge for like that's where the strike zone is my eyes aren't lying to me and i just think not having the box for from a hitter's perspective is is super challenging to make those in-game adjustments which is something that like guys pride themselves on guys pride yeah, nope. themselves on making adjustments pitch to pitch about to a bat I don't think they took it away uh, because of Ian Happ. I think they took it away more because there's some people that would go Pat Bev and be like, you see this shit? You see that? That's not even close. And then they're holding Dude, some, that over the railing. Some of the stories they said, like, when it was live, they would literally just stand there like it was a sign, <laughs> and they would just be like, I told Sick you. Background. I told Sick you, back. Jim. Sick background, by the way. Chop. Choppy. Look at that. That's a good picture. I know, man. He's a, a good boy. Man. I missed him. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> Ian walked away, and we're both just like, that was wild. What do we do? What do we do now? Where, where is Well, it? hey, where you got go? you guys had a day. We had you a Ian. day today. We Ian had a what day. A, what a treat. What a treat getting to see Ian Hat play some golf. That's nice. Probably not as much of a treat watching me play, but he, uh, he shot. had some good chop. We did have some good chop. He shot even on the front. Um, Ian, we kind of fell apart without you, so we turned it into – how we, we had a good day apart. today. We just took a little uh, we, 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 Well, we I want to talk about this. I don't know how you guys intro it, but <laughs> what happened today was the Cubbies had an off day. We're in Seattle, mm -hmm. where Dakota is working and living. And so Dakota had an off day today. Serendipitous mm -hmm. for us. Fantastic. What a and word so, choice out of you. Thank wow. you. Thank you. We were able to go play golf. And so we went to play at a uh, shout out Broadmoor Golf Club. And we went and played golf. Uh, we had a wonderful day in the northwest the pacific northwest and uh and we played we played some great golf i'll tell you dakota was playing a uh, a ball flight <laughs> <laughs> i knew windy. you were gonna say this wasn't super windy Zach, out there. you would have puked watching me <laughs> wasn't super windy out there but no. he was playing a low left to right flight <laughs> and he was keeping it Just under the wind lasers nice he was nice. lasers all over the course it was it was it was fairly straight and not uh ineffective no. but uh but he was hitting it low keeping it low under the wind Rolled the rock great. There was a couple of tough greens that got away from both of us. Dude. Back nine, the back nine was a struggle. I felt like I hit it really well all day, and my score didn't reflect as well as I hit it. The putter was not great. I needed to figure something out. But uh, but we had a blast out there. We had a really great time. We had a wonderful <laughs> member, Chris, that uh, that hosted us, and he was yeah, he was the man. He, he was a joy to be with. Um, Zach, you would it was hilarious. First tee shot of the day, I pop it up a little bit. Like it was fine, but I popped it up high fly ball in the infield okay. um and then the next 10 drives were just bullets that didn't get above five feet off the ground and they honestly, a little, like, little had, subconscious right there they, like just they kind of worked though like they were actually like not terrible they were in play um dakota only lost one ball today and the and ball he like lost a, it was a freak ball the ball he lost what happened was he hit it into a large tree and it never came out but it didn't sound like like you know how like Zach like you'll hear it like oh yeah. that that's probably in there but like it didn't even make a sound and the layer like I'm like dude we don't need to look for that like we didn't even really look I'm like I'm just gonna throw one down like it's not a we big did deal. we looked a little good. bit I I yeah I was watching the ball really hard and I thought I don't know if that came out of there no um but dude putting Zach it was Zach. like. It was fast, not like crazy fast. Wouldn't you say? And I don't think it was like it crazy, wasn't crazy fast, fast, but it was like the slopes were so like gradual, like you couldn't really read anything. Like every putt looked straight, and then you'd hit it, and it's like shit. It's ten feet past, or dang, like that went ten feet to the left. Like I didn't even see anything in that. That that there's just no demor like more demoralizing feeling when you putt it, and you just know right away that it's just not even going to be competitive and you're like me all day yeah. yeah this is just a waste of time <laughs> i must the, have the, five i must have five <laughs> five foot birdie looks yeah you did the whole on I, I, had, I had two horribly horribly sad lip outs one <laughs> dude one that was one that, that was halfway one was in the cup and ended up five feet away and one that did a literal 360 and came back at me it literally like around back to him and then like kicked out i was like that's not possible like that shouldn't that defied physics the old walk it in but you're not walking in and you're just walking to where the side of the hole just to tap it right back in i hit multiple putts today too that like 
like 12 footers probably if they didn't hit the back of the cup they were going 15 feet past so, like i was the back hand, of the cup. but they, they hit, hit the back, back of the cup, cup. and i was I like, mean you're fine. dead center it's all good dude we had a uh, I shot I shot 76. I had a I had a, a streak of I had a streak of some bad luck on the back nine. But I didn't hit it bad. I just got unlucky and then and then some bad putts. But <laughs> Zach, we did have, delete that video from your phone. <laughs> we had one we had one hole specifically that Dakota and I were both above the hole on the right side of it. Oh my god. I was just off the green, Dakota was on the back of the green. <laughs> and I hit my putt. From off the green, and I thought well, I had a pretty good putt there. You you started the line above the hole. Yeah, I thought that's pretty good. I'm not kidding you. I ended up 50 <laughs> feet Dude, away from the hole. They rolled the down. Stopped, the ball never stops rolling. But the best part of that was Dakota proceeded to do the exact same thing. <laughs> but you saw where I was like directly behind the pin, and I was putting straight downhill, and I thought I tapped it. 50 feet pass. I'm like, I, I don't know what I could have done there. He watched my putt and then did the exact <laughs> same thing. Did you, was, uh, did any of that golf bring back some compound memories or what? It I did. Felt great to be you out tee there. Off, tee off from the Reds with only an eight iron for a few holes. Or what? <laughs> it felt really great to be out there. The, the, the funniest one is, uh, I, th- I forget what hole it was like 13 or something. Ian was like, behind a tree almost or like behind branches and had to hit like kind of a low 56 and kind of like spin it into the green. And he's just like grabbing his club. He goes, I'm a good player. I have this shot. I'm a good player. I can hit this shot. I'm a good player and I can hit this shot. And he goes up and he hits it and he like hit it really good. And it just rolled like 20 feet past. And he's like, I thought I hit that really good. I was trying to really give myself some positive reinforcement towards the end there. (laughs) I I've, fell apart late, dude. I went like triple, triple, double, triple bogey to end the day. And I was like, I'm it's gone. A little bit of tight back. Yeah, the back was tight. You know, I uh might have to go see Fran tomorrow, get a little work done. Uh oh, I was right. playing with a Cubs player, so I think I'm allowed to go in there and get some treatment. Yes. But no, Tre- it was treatment uh, by association. Exactly. It was a great day. Um Northwest. Oh, Zach, the North good. Northwest is nice, man. Zach, you're gonna love this part of the story. I pick up Ian from the hotel. He was nice enough to get his coffees, first of all. Nice. It's pro. Second of all, we're going there. And I, for some reason, am using Apple Maps. And it says we as got as you like, should. <laughs> it says we got like seven minutes to the course, like a mile. Ian pulls up Google Maps. He goes, Where the hell are you going? It's you were supposed to turn back there. We're like two seconds away. And I'm like, this is telling me to keep going this way. And he goes, No do this and we do it and we were like right there and i almost took a wrong turn he almost yelled at me and that's that's uh google maps proved better in that no. scenario then you, then you dakota did. dakota had to take us through a neighborhood with speed bumps in his truck oh, god and we couldn't physically get back to the road we needed to be on then we had to wait behind a construction vehicle uh and was... we we almost ended up i mean we were a couple we were three minutes behind schedule but, oh god but he almost yelled at me and i was like dude i'm following what the maps say i don't know where i'm going that was your fault for going with apple maps it was a crazy move That's Dakota, crazy. how far are you staying from the hotel uh i mean it, it like right now probably like 30 40 minutes but this morning with like rush hour it took me like an hour 10 to get to him and i'm, uh, I'm the not course was say, like five minutes i'm not gonna say that dakota said he would be there sh- at 8 30 sharp to pick me up but he might have and then no I, chance. I, I'll, and then I, I will and then screenshot I get a, the text. And, and then I get a text in the morning saying 847. Not true. This is These are lies. Wow. I said, I'm going to plan on heading out around 745. It's like 40 minutes from me. I wake up at 715. I plug it in. It says an hour. I go, I better get going. I leave at 730. I said, I'll be there around 830. Yes, sir. That's my last text. Around 830. At eight twenty six, I said fifteen minutes away. I got there at like eight forty. I think I'm team. I think I'm team eight here. No way! I didn't I plan on one more an hour. You got it. You can do it. Hey, Google Maps. You can do or uh, Apple Maps. You, you can, can do it. Do. Anticipated. Anticipated. Come on, time. brother. Come on. Okay. I, mean, I was up at seven fifteen on my off day. I thought it was I, nice. I yeah. So that you could play golf with me. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I, it was worth. I wanted, it was worth it. Just one last thing. Hmm. Oh, I know what you're going to say. We finish up the round. We finish up the round. I knew you were going to say this. It was a nice round. 
our generous member invites us in for some lunch. Zach will be on my side on this. We sit in the we sit in the uh, the nice grill area. Masters is on the big TV, and uh, we all order our food. Member gets a <laughs> burger. You get a wagyu beef burger. Yep, made of wagyu. Nice wagyu beef burger. I get the club sandwich. Guess to Dakota, sir. What would you like? Dakota says wagyu beef burger. Our nice uh, waiter says, "How would you like that done?" Dakota says, "Well, well done, Wagyu beef burger. Come on, What's happening? Buddy. It's made of Wagyu. Zach, you're not on my side. No, the burger. Why would I want pink in my burger? He took the steak, Wagyu medium. burger. I always made get medium burger puck. made into a hockey puck. I wanted that thing well. I didn't want it mooing when it got out to me. Dakota." It was still good. I think he offended. I'm sure it was. Imagine how much better it would have been. The thing was, is I said it and I instantly looked at Ian because I knew he'd have a look <laughs> on his face, which he did. And I was like, I knew it. I knew Ian was going to hate that. But I was like, this is just this is what it is. I all of the people listening will say that you getting a Wagyu beef burger well done is a bananas move. Um, I, They probably will. And I've always been on the side of like people like to make a big stink about how you get your steaks i'm like isn't it just how you like it like however i like it like what's the matter like why does it if you're saying i'm ruining it like i like it so who cares who cares it was good it was a good burger good fries before we move we had on a great day we had a great we day. had a great day we had a great day it didn't take away from the day and did you end, use your bruce hey did you use your bruce bolt and hat golf glove no, I told him I almost brought it, and it's still never been used. And I'm like, I just couldn't do it. I didn't want to get it dirty. Did you use a Bruce Bolt glove today? No, I used a Kirkland one. Shout out Costco. Shout out Kim Meckis. Um, also, Ian, you didn't give me a shout out on how good my wedges were, though. I am dialed Tight wedges. with wedges. Tight wedges. Short game, very good. He had some really good short game shots. Bunkers weren't great. We won't talk about it. But the rest of the short game was dialed. Um, But best part, I still get to watch Ian play Saturday. That's nice. Get to go to a little Cubbies game, and it's show today too. Imanaga. Before we move on to baseball, before we move on to baseball, I want to talk about a company that I love, that Zach loves, that Dakota loves. Bruce Bolt. Look at the bolt. Look at the bolt on the hat. Bruce Bolt. Dot us. They have game hats. You can customize them for your team. Do whatever you want to do. Whatever logo you want to do. They got a little bit of stretch to them. They got sweat resistant technology. They also have golf gloves. They also have batting gloves. My batting gloves are back in stock. You got the baby blues. You got the white with baby blue. New one coming? Maybe. Maybe sometime this summer. BruceBolt.us. Go check them out. And you've been to Seattle before, right? No, first time. Whoa. Whoa. You're going to love time it. In Seattle. You're going to love it. The place is special. special. Yeah, I, I'm excited. Uh, It was 50, just over 50 today, 52, 54, and like pretty comfortable. So it's going to be a little bit nicer weather the next two days, three days. I'm excited to see the stadium. Pretty cool place. Stadium, dude, it's... Oh. I've never special. been to the stadium either, so I'm excited for that. Can I Can I just Zach, talk about one player that I like right now? Zach got to go there for a little tryout, kind of a tryout, a little showcase, oh, pre-draft. Yeah. That works. Can yeah, I talk they, about one? They chose talk, not to take him. Their mistake. Talk, yes, you can tell us. One player that I like. Mm-hmm. He's a new guy on the scene. Um, looks pretty good to me. He's got 12 games played, 50 at bats. I knew I know where this is going. 14 hits, six homers, eight RBIs, two yeah. stolen bases, no caught stealing, five walks. Yeah, that's good for a 318 batting average, 400 on base, 795 slug, good for a 1.195 in the early mm-hmm. going. He's leading the league, uh, American League in homers and total bases. That player's name is Mike Trout. How pissed is Tom? I He's... love, love seeing there him. There he is. That. Tom, get back on the screen. <laughs> oh, Tom hates it. Tom hates Trout. Seeing Mike Trout hit homers is one of my favorite things. He's so good. It's so mean, though, that it's always the same thing every year it's like oh mike trout three for four two homers angels lose by five it's like come on help the guy out a little bit you see ron washington getting into the umpire's ass the other day after the game dude i didn't Uh see that it was uh is at the end mickey moniac 
or uh, Peter Fairbanks was throwing to Moniac. And there were some questionable. I think it was kind of going on all day. And after the game, the game's over. I think he punches him out or he swings and misses and gets pissed. And Ron just comes out hollering at him. It was great, dude. He had pep in his step. Guys love, love playing that. for him. Guys love playing. I love when the managers get into the umps a little bit. What uh, what storylines do we got in in ball right now? The Mets. Mets are hot. Mets are hot. Big two win series, today. Two series wins in a row on the road. Hey, did you guys get banged on Wednesday? Yeah, and they moved it to yeah. September. You got banged like two straight days, right? Yeah, no, nah, two straight days. Um, no. Well, I think we're up to three already. We had opening day was banged, one in, one at home against Detroit was banged, and then Atlanta. Dude, they canceled that one at like 4 o'clock for a 720 game. They were just like, yeah, we're not having it. That's a wild move, I feel like. And it, no, but like, it was nice. Though, like... It was it was red. It's nice to have oh, a day really? like that. Yeah, it is. We even hit BP on the field. They were like, you guys want to hit? Hey, can you tell us about playing Detroit? Yeah, that was wild, man. It was uh it was kind of funny. So I went in. I mean, I saw them I saw them twice in spring, so it wasn't like it was the first time seeing them. Um, you know, obviously the spring training is way more relaxed, kind of. Um, and then, you know, seeing everybody, there's new staff, not new staff, new coaches, new players over there, um, different dynamic. But I go in in either the first or second game in extra innings to go play defense after I run. And I just hear a few guys over there literally barking like dogs. Like, yeah, that's right, 21. We're on you, 21. <laughs> I'm just like, what do we got over there, you know? Um, it is. It was cool seeing different for sure. Um, finally, nice to get our first win against them. Nice Tyrone Taylor walk-off knock. We played them. I mean, they were close three games. We should have won. Two of them we um, blew a lead in the second game. Does it feel cool? I just thought of this back in spring when you hit that home ring against Tigers. Oops. Um, the announcer said to I, I think it was I forget if it was a Tigers or Mets announcer, but they were like fan uh, ex Tiger fan favorite Zach Short. Like, does that feel cool? I feel like that's pretty cool. I feel like that's true too. Like, I feel like people loved you. People do um, love you still, but people like in Detroit like. Loved ZS I don't know. Man. I don't know if a majority of them did, but I mean, I don't know if anyone is majority loved it unless you're no, Mike Trout. I, yeah. Um, like I'm sure even Ian's got some haters out there. Yeah. No. I mean, it's nice because it's you know try to treat you know everybody like they're you know important. So like mm-hmm. you know, no matter who you're talking to, um, and that was kind of you know it's it's frustrating not playing well for a majority of the time there and you know to kind of still have that to have somebody say something like that is it, it does mean you know it's a little bit more than baseball obviously and for somebody to say that it yeah it does mean a lot um and it's but, sick like hinch like you've told us like hinch like talked to you and like said like yeah said it, what's up like that's pretty cool yeah and you know it was like i said it it was something that i i figured was going to happen at some point but i didn't think it was going to happen that early in the off season so it was kind of almost nice to to take the bandaid off kind of as soon as we had an opportunity to do so. But I mean, like, dude, I, I gave an, an interview in spring um, with the Detroit reporter talking about my time over there. And um, it was like, I think the thing I said was like, I grew up as a player in that locker room where it was like, I learned so much about baseball, so much about myself, so much about, you know, being a, you know, dealing with, yeah, like dealing with a big leaguer, not dealing with becoming a big leaguer and acting like a pro um, where it, I mean, you learn a lot in the minor leagues, but you learn a lot in the big leagues, obviously. Um, and it helped. And, sorry to keep cutting you no, off. I'm just keep chiming in. Uh, it, it, it definitely helped you. I think like know how to handle it too, going into that with like, we've talked about this a million times, but the teams we had with Iowa Cubs, like Jim Adusi and like guys like that telling you like, this is what you do when you're there. So like you got there and it's like, like you said, like you knew like some stuff of like, Hey, I gotta be the first one in like to the cages. Like I'm not getting in the way of Miguel Cabrera trying to hit in the yeah. cage, but then like you learned 
10,000 times more being there. hundred percent. And then, you know, learning on top of that, like learning how to deal with failure. Oh, mm-hmm. I mean, it felt like, you know, my rookie year, like started out really hot. And then like, it spiraled like to a point where I was like, this may not be for me, you know, like, mm-hmm. and I'm, I mean, it's hard. And, you know, like I said, I grew up, you know, I, I knew so many people over there. I felt like I knew everybody in the organization and I only played at AAA. Where in like in the Cubs, when I got traded, it was like I knew everybody from, you know, the bottom basically to the top for those yeah. however many years I was there. Um, and like I said, I what I said was like I grew up as a person in that locker room for, you know, that three year period that I was there because it was such like a big, you know, period of time in my career as a person and a baseball player. So yeah, obviously it was hard, you know, leaving and seeing them, you know, kind of have their roster turn over and not be a part of it. But it was also cool competing against them at the same time. Like, again, like we talked about Foles, like seeing yeah. him from the opposing dugout was pretty, you know, I'm going to say cool, but it was you know, one like your, knowing, one yeah, like friends. knowing, knowing what he went through to get to the position that he's at now was pretty cool to see it from both ends. And like, again, we've, gone over this but like they're such a young team that like it wasn't a bunch of vets where like you were kind of like the young guy and it was like oh it's look look at zach over there it's like no like you were the same like everyone was like around the same age like you had your vets sprinkled in of like grossman miggy like guys like that but torque riley yeah it's 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 a really unique clubhouse because you know you hear like you said of you know the veterans running the clubhouse but it was like the veterans that go over there now it's like they're learning not learning but like they go through the ways of how that clubhouse was ran by the younger guys like Mm -hmm. there's a lot of them they outnumber the vets and i'm sure the vets obviously do their thing but it's like that's the culture over there and it's built by that young core Mm -hmm. tom tweeted from the compound account asking for some questions so i'm just going to throw a couple out there okay okay wait can i ask one first we talked about this today in the car, and I just wanted to bring it up on the pod. How gross is Yamamoto? He's got good stuff. He's got really good stuff. It's an interesting mix seeing him for the first time. Um, he's a smaller dude, so he kind of throws from a lower arm angle. Fastball's pretty explosive, really firm. The curveball's interesting because it's like 12-6, and when it's away to a lefty, it's almost so up and down that it feels like it kind of backs up the other way, but it's got good kind of horizontal up and down. Um, and the splitters, splitters firm and and pretty nasty. So you really have to work to keep them off the bottom, but pretty, pretty, He's- pretty good mix. And we had him on the ropes a few times and he was able to make pitches and kind of get out of it. So um, definitely some, some real pitch ability there. It, it's taking a good team. He struck out Saya on a heater up. I think it was 98 that, again, for those at home, fast uh, pitches cannot rise technically. Um, it literally looked like it went up. It looked like a Craig Kimbrell, like glory days, like that ball started his belt and went up to his nipples. Like I was like at 98. I'm like, that's impossible. That is literally like you can never hit that and you're going to swing it at it every time. Yeah, he's got he's got pretty good vert. It's been it's been a lot of vert. From Cubby's been seeing some birth recently. Yeah, let's get you let's get you a nice sinker baller out there. We'll get you right back into this week's compound, but first it's time to talk about our friends from DraftKings. It is officially time for fans to head to the ballpark and root for their home team as baseball season gets underway. You may have heard of it if you listen to this podcast. Get in on the action early this season with our partners at DraftKings Sportsbook. Right now, all new customers can bet. Five bucks and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. And don't forget to use our code COMPOUND. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers who use the promo code COMPOUND and bet just $5 on any wager and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. The promo code COMPOUND only at the DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. 
Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Or in West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and y 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and over, age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.co slash baseball for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, or responsible gaming resources. Well, let me ask you, let me ask you the question. Okay. This is for Dakota. Oh, yeah. Oh. oh. How is working at driveline? It's with, cool. With pitchers at all levels. It's cool. To try and limit arm strain that lead to the injuries we've been seeing. Let me ask so, the question. Let me, fr- let me frame this in, a, in another way. I was like, that's a tough question. You're putting yeah, me on the spot another that one. How much, how much conversation has there been? You know, you're working at a place that specializes in guys growing, changing stuff, working on stuff. And it's like mm-hmm. kind of the industry leader in some of this stuff. Like how much conversation has there been internally about arm injuries and, and how much of a focus is it? Cause I know what you guys are doing isn't just like trying to build pitchers to be as disgusting as they are. A big part of what you do is trying to make sure that guys are as healthy as they can possibly be. hundred percent. And we talk about it a lot, like within our pitching department, because as we've all seen in baseball, like there's been, a huge rise lately in injuries. Um, and we talked about it a little bit today, Ian, you and me, I think workload is a huge factor for a lot of guys, especially like the younger guys, like young kids or like even college kids, like they just think they need to throw a hundred percent all the time every day. And like, that's the way they're going to throw harder and get better. And that's not always true. And I mean, that like, I'm not going to say you're not going to get better, but like you need to give yourself time to like, give your arm a break because throwing a baseball is an un- unnatural act. So like anytime you throw a baseball, no matter how hard you throw, like you're at a risk of an injury because your arm's not supposed to do that. So it's definitely been a big focus. Um, so I, I attributed a lot to workload, the late rash of injuries. Um, some people have said like pitch clock, I have a strong disagreement with that. I don't think that plays really much of a factor at all because I've talked about it with people that like I work with I'm like guys have worked fast forever like even without a pitch clock and they didn't get hurt so it's like what do you I don't think that has anything to do with it I do think in some specific cases no like names or anything but just like guys around the league like taking away any sort of stick and having to grip the ball a little tighter may be somewhat of a factor uh, that is my theory. There is no, I have no science behind that. To, Ian's eyes just went low. <laughs> but that is truly, I, I do believe that. I believe that if you are forced to grip it tighter because you don't feel comfortable without it. And I'm not saying stick. I'm saying sunscreen and rosin is apparently outlawed now. And that's, I mean, guys have used that for years. So it's like, if you've done it this way forever, and then you're asked to do it without it and you don't feel comfortable and you're gripping it tighter, I think that could be a cause. But my main number one cause is workload. I think people don't take full advantage of recovery days, especially at younger levels, and they overthrow, and that leads to stress on your elbow constantly. Dakota, Dakota, can I ask you, do you think the lack of – the, or I guess the increased specialization, like kids are now, you work with kids, you know, that are in high school or even maybe even younger, you know, certainly there are kids that are younger than high school age that are seeking out programs like yours. Obviously you want driveline to get business, but at some point, isn't it, isn't there a harm in a, a 10 year old kid going, how do I get better? I'm pitching all year round where those kids used to go yes. play basketball. They used to go play something else. And then, you know, the specialization is happening so early now where it's Mm -hmm. like, can't kids be a kid? And then at a certain point, when you get to high school, when you get to college, okay, now this is when you start these programs instead of starting trying to throw curveballs at age, you know, 10, 11. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more with that. Um, I was fucking ripping curveballs at nine years old. I'm a big proponent of like, well, Zach, you'd agree with this part too. Like I'm a huge proponent in playing other sports. Like even if like baseball is like your thing, your best at, I'm like, why like go play other sports? Like, especially like you said, Tom, at 10 years old, you don't need to play baseball 12 months a year. 
that's just crazy. Like you don't need to throw a baseball 12 months a year. And I agree, like until high school and even like, even like freshmen in high school, I feel like are too young to be doing like these, Oh, like I'm trying to throw harder. I'm trying to do this. And I'm like, I get it. Like you want to get recruited and like, you want to be the best you can. But I'm like, at that age, like you're so young, your body's not even developed to handle that stress. Like until you're, I couldn't even put an age on it, but like 16, 17, like even then you're not fully grown. So it's like, until you have the strength to even handle this stress, like I I think you're doing yourself a disservice by like trying to maximize velo at that age. I just like to like the whole picture of this. And I think that not everybody sees unless you're in this world is that kids are getting recruited younger. Like the recruiting process is starting younger. Like when we were in, in high school, like I didn't get recruited heavily until I was going into my junior year. And mm-hmm. that was like early then, like getting For recruited sure. going into your junior year was like sophomore summer. That was like, yeah, man, you're, you're, you've got some offers. That's pretty great. Like that's kind of a big deal. And I didn't sign until I was going into my senior year. Like I didn't make a decision until I went through my entire junior year. I scoped out all the schools. Like I made my visits. And then like before my senior year started, I made my decision. And so now kids are signing as like eighth graders and freshmen in high school. And so they're doing all of these things to perform at a super high level when they're 13, 14 years old so that they can go to the Vanderbilts and the Floridas and the Florida States and like these Mississippi state, these big schools, because that's when they're getting recruited. And so it's not the kid's fault no. that all of this stuff is being pressured on them at such a young age because this is when, you know, the perfect games out there and the and the the organizations that are ranking these kids at such a young age, you know, they're forcing them to perform at the highest possible level to get college scholarships, to get looks from scouts. And like it's not it, it's coming from a lot of different places. It's not just like the kid's fault or like one and and JMO made Alex Wood had this really good tweet thread and JMO made a good point, Jameson Tyon about it's so different now, the way that pitchers are training. Like it used to be that you would finish the season, you take a couple months off of throwing guys would throw in the off season. But I remember even when I was first coming up that like guys would throw their first bullpen in spring training, guys that were vets would come to spring training. They would throw their first bullpen and be coming up like poop. And then by the time mm-hmm. the season was upon us like they were ready to go and now like i showed up to camp this year guys had thrown to hitters live three or four times like dudes are fully ramped they've been throwing full effort bullpens all off season to work on new pitches to work on stuff teams are evaluating guys spin rates on the rep soto in bullpen so even in between starts in between sessions these guys are having to throw max effort to get those numbers to see what it looks like to work on stuff and like it is a ton of stress on the arm in a very very unnatural motion. My my me and Ian talked about this on the course today. My counter not counterpoint because like I, there's no right side or wrong side of this whole thing. Like it's just my thing about that that I see obviously why people do it is like the vets of the world, like the Max Scherzer, Jake, what, whatever, like the, the dudes, like the dudes that are like, I'm going to be in the rotation. Doesn't matter. I'll be there. Like they can afford to do that, but I get why the 22, 25 year old is, Hey, I need to be locked in like day one of spring. I have to be throwing 95 because otherwise they're going to send me to minor league camp. Like, so that's just kind of the way the baseball world works, unfortunately. But like you said, it does increase or it does lead to this guy's coming into spring but like you said he's five lives deep already so by the time the season starts he's thrown eight times in spring and five lives before like he's 13 outings in and the season just started so like you have all that extra stress and another it's a poor excuse but it's just the facts is like said to ian like i think a lot of the injuries are just people just throw so hard now like that's all like that's increased stress like the harder you throw the more stress you're putting on your elbow and that's like that's just you want to throw harder like there is that risk every time and it's not again it's not the player's fault like no this is where the game is trended this is where we are right the game is trended into a place where guys are pushing the envelope more than they ever have guys are throwing crazier nastier stuff than they ever have and like unfortunately 
we are pushing the upper bounds of like what the body is capable of. And that is leading to like a increase in arm injuries. And it's not like brand new. This has been something that's been coming for years. It's just a bunch of big names went down kind of in a very short window this year. Um, but it is, you know, it's something that needs to be looked at and addressed. And I hope that both sides, players and Major League Baseball, will do a good job of like researching and finding solutions. I don't think it's going to be fixed tomorrow, but like we want the best players in the game to be as healthy as possible. And that's my only thing about this is like I don't I don't know what the solution is because it's like okay like hey we don't want you to throw as hard but it's like every team still wants you to throw hard so like how how do we if you throw a hundred you're gonna get you're gonna get more looks and somebody throwing two that's just the facts like that's literally just how it is and that's what people know that so they're like they're willing to start their throwing sooner do more stuff in the off season to throw harder because they're like if I'm 96 to 98 versus 92 to 94, like I'm going to get more chances. Like that's like just if, how If somebody it is. comes up to you and says, you know, like, hey, your best potential is you throwing 98 to 100, but you may get hurt, but you also make you 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 may make life changing money. What what are you going <laughs> to do? Like that's you know that's why we're friends because me and Scott Scotty Afros, friend of the pod, good friend of the pod. Um, we we're talking about it. And I, I literally said to Scott, I said, the thing is about baseball right now and just in forever, probably is if you told someone, Hey, you can throw 98 to hundred, but there's a very high chance you blow out at some point in your career, but you'll make the big leagues. I think 99% of pitchers would say deal. Right. Like I, that's just the facts. Like it, I would do it. Like if you told me right now, Hey, you come back and you throw 98, but you're going to blow out in two years. I'd be like, but I make it to the big leagues. I'm in like right. that's side. For it's, sure. just, it's 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 human nature it's yeah i mean like yeah and on the position player the side like it's not like obviously on the position player side like you it's a different thing but like guys push themselves like you play through mm-hmm. stuff you play through like a sore something that like could lead to a blowout like whether that that's not an arm necessarily for position players but it's something that like I will play through this, even if it means that I get hurt because I want to be out there and I want to compete. And like, that's why guys are at the highest level. I, I likened it to, sorry, last point on this. I like, I, when I was talking with Scott, I likened it to in football, the concussions. I'm like, okay, like you go out there, you're playing a physical sport. You could get a concussion at any time in baseball. Okay. You're going to throw really hard. Your elbow could pop at any time. Like, it's just the way the game is now which is unfortunate, but it's just kind of a harsh reality. Yeah. I got a, we got a question on the, uh, on the old Twitter um, about West coast trips. You're on Zach, a haul right now. Zach, you get a, you go on a 10 day West coaster. What time are you waking up those first three days? Pretty early, probably six or seven, just at your, you're an early riser anyway, though. Yeah. Um, probably six or seven, just had a habit, you know, waking up at nine or 10. Um, it's different, man. It's, and then like after the game, you are so tired and you're sitting there like, man, why? And you're like, duh, you know, it's two o'clock at home. Um, oh, <laughs> do you remember? I was just thinking this. I'm proud of you for this. You oh wake up now, I feel like most time at like nine. When you say most time in the off season, like even earlier, I feel like you're up. I only know what time Zach wake up because of our snap streak. For those wondering, um, you used to when we'd be road roommates, like you'd sleep till like noon, like twelve no, thirty. Yes, never. you did. <laughs> Cap. Cap. I Dakota. I promise you, maybe ten. I would. I've never. Slept but you'd in lay life. in bed until like noon. Fair. I don't know. I swear you did. I don't think so. I'm gonna have to reach out to some sources we have um, within our friend group. Because if I don't I eat, if I don't eat within like an hour or so, my my day is ruined. Like, yeah, physically. no one likes no one likes a hungry Zach either. Well, I get a, a headache. Nice <laughs> I get a migraine. <laughs> Sorry, I, yeah, I didn't mean to stop your question. Okay, we're gonna go back to the West Coast conversation. I have been very much struggling to sleep enough. I have kind of been waking up at seven seven thirty. And then like forcing myself to stay in bed and try to get another, you know, 
half hour, hour of sleep. But it's not, it's nice though, because you're playing with house. Like if you wake up early and you kind of feel like refreshed, you're like, I have some time, but you to know, but you yeah. know that your body needs more sleep. Like yeah, that's, no, I agree. One of the things, right. one of the things about that, like, you know, that you have to perform optimally at like 7 p.m. And so if you wake up at 7 a.m., you know, you're going to be up for 12 hours yeah. before you have to like optimally perform. And if you go to bed, which is like generally if you play a seven o'clock game, you get back to the hotel by 11, 1130. And so like you're trying to get to sleep 12, 1230. But a lot of the times it's like between 1230 and one. So if you go to sleep at 1230, you wake up at 730, you know, you got seven hours and like you trying to get trying you're pushing yourself to get eight or sometimes even more if you've had like tough travel day light sleep so you know that you have to like if i can stay in bed if i can sleep until 8 30 9 9 30 and get my nine hours like this is going to be a lot better for me but it's just like when you're on the west coast and your body's not adjusted like it's very very challenging um i would like if there's any sleep doctors listening i had a teammate last year Ian said this just now made me think of it. Um, I had a teammate that would stay up until like three, four in the morning and he would sleep until like 1 PM and his theory behind it. He said, I need to perform at seven o'clock. Why should the middle or like, why should the peak of my day be 1 PM? (laughs) And he's, and I was like, sneaky. I don't hate your thought process there. Like that kind of makes sense. I don't, I don't disagree with that. I don't like completely totally agree with the staying up that late, but I don't disagree with like kind of changing your clock. The thing that I think with the way that the Cubs schedule is and why that I don't, I try not to subscribe to that program is because we end up playing so many one twenties. Yeah. True. That waking up between like, if you can wake up anywhere between eight and nine 30, you're kind of on a decent schedule for both. And so, like, when we have to, when we were playing day games at Wrigley and a bunch of 120s, like, you got to be getting up at, like, 8, 830 to be on the right schedule to get to the ballpark. And then when you go on the road, you know, it's more of, like, a try. I try to be in bed until I, I push to try to be in bed till 9. But, like, that is, I don't hate that schedule. I think but Tom lives his life on that schedule. I was going to say, <laughs> I mean, partially. But not as bad as it used to be. But I would say when I first was a broadcaster and I was living with a host family, there was some conversations about my schedule. And I basically had the same conversation where I said, my job requires me to be alone in a room and talk for three hours straight every single night and try to make that entertaining for people. I need to be at my absolute peak performance or whatever that is for a broadcaster at seven o'clock every night. If that means I got to go to bed at 4 a.m. and wake up at 1 p.m. and that's like how I'm able to peak. Because I think the hardest part for me, and I don't, I don't know how you guys feel about this as players, but after a game, you go eat. You know, there's all like that routine you get into after games as well where you eat. You know, you get back to the hotel late. Now all of a sudden it's 1, 2 already. And I'm still so amped from a game that it takes you a while to get down sometimes too. So I think that was also part of it for me. I always felt like I was always so after a game, you get into a routine of eating and then you – you're just kind of fired up that it takes you a while to settle down too. I I've said that, especially last year when I would pinch hit or go late into games, like my spike was, you know, seventh, eighth, and ninth inning. And it, it doesn't just come down as soon as the game's over, but like, if you start a game, you know, you're kind of gradually spiking all game. Um, you know, and you can only get so high for the most parts, but like, if I go in there and I have a really high situation and then like, it takes you, you know, at least an hour or two, to kind of even start to calm down a little bit, in my opinion, like Mm -hmm. coming in in those late situations, it's hard, but like, it's completely different if you start a game compared to, or even if you have a big at bat late in the game, either you, you come through or you don't Dakota, you come in late in a game and leave, like takes you a while to to, Foles talks about all the time. He's like, Mm -hmm. dude, I can never sleep after the nights I throw, it's just like, I'm too amped up. He comes in in the eighth or ninth inning. It's those it's a guys lot. are drinking Red Bulls in the bullpen before they well, go. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. It's the exactly like what full said. Like if you throw later in the game, like the nights I'd pitch, like I'd be up till one, two in the morning because like, like you said, Zach, like the, it's not like, Oh, game's over. Okay. I'm tired. It's like, man, that was or like either you're pissed because you do like shit or you're fired up because you threw really good. And you're like, either way you're amped. I was just going to say, it's funny. It's like, I sleep the best when I have just like a very like whatever like game. One, like one just, for four. 
couple couple you know, routine yeah, ground over balls. Three with a walk, like <laughs> all right, and like made every play, but like it's either if I go three for four and I'm like, dude, I'm watching Amazing. all of every angle, like watching the soaking it play. in. You're like, how do I make four, an four punchies? You're like, I mean, I, this is fucking terrible. Wait, can I ask you something mm. post game routine wise, Zach? Game game ends, training room stuff, weight room stuff, whatever. When do you eat? It really depends. Um, if it's a, there's some nights on the road where, if I don't get in there right away. I'll just take it back to the room and eat. Um, but I like eating at the field. I think it's part of like my decompression um, where it's a kind of a few minutes where I don't really think about it. If I'm, especially if I'm talking to somebody, like I won't really think about my performance as much as, you know, um, if I eat by myself. Um, but at home, I usually like to do all my stuff and then shower and then eat. Okay. I got it. I got one for you. I used to be a guy that would I'd do all my stuff, shower, and I'd either eat or generally when we were at home, I would take it with me, take it back to my place, eat when I got back and kind of decompress at home. But your body, when you when you feed it that late and you're like trying to digest, like it's hard to go to bed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I've tried this year. It's a new thing for me. I'm trying it. Is like as soon as the game ends. Vegetarian. Before I- before <laughs> lentils <laughs> only before i before i do my training room stuff before i do my weight room stuff i try to like go directly to eat eat before i do anything and then do the other stuff and then leave so that i give but, myself because that's like another hour like i give it, I, I totally I agree go. um but i'm not as hungry right after a game like it'll take me a little bit to get back in like the kind of hungry state where I'm like, all right, like I can eat. Next time I try to give you a tip that I'm working on, I'll just not do it. I'll this just was not just do conversation. I'm not going to take it. And this was just, just conversation. I'm going so the next time I think I have something that might benefit you. I'm just going to keep hey, it. To my the next day, the next day that I'm in there, the next day that I'm in there, I'll do that. No, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's a bad idea and it doesn't work for anybody. I think it's a great idea, man. Yeah. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm just gonna think he about didn't. He didn't really like shit on it. He I, was like, I was just like, this like, goes back to my point that I was talking about earlier about it's hard for me to decompress after a game. But hey, we can run with your narrative. That's fine. No, I'm gonna think <laughs> about all the five foot putts I missed today. Good as you yeah, should. There's a lot of them. It's been an ongoing problem. People okay. say. Here's a uh, here's a question. This doesn't have to do with baseball, but I'd like to get your take on it. If you could only have one with your meals for the rest of time. Appetizers or desserts? Do you want me to? It, it, easy to answer all time. Up. Desserts. Are you joking? Have you seen me? You think I would give up desserts? I oh, love desserts. I love desserts. I love desserts, but there's nothing better in the world to me than some good appetizers. Shout out to my friend Devin Perlman. Every time we go out, order his mozzarella sticks, wings. That's his meal. It's one of the best moves I've ever seen. He does it every time, and I respect it so much. I love appetizers. Like, could I still have ice cream at like a different time? Or is it like, I never can have ice cream. Dakota, like, Matt, like, can I Dakota. go, can I go home and eat ice cream? Dakota, imagine not having a pizzuki, being able to have a pizzuki. <laughs> there, there's no world where I'm giving up pizzukis. There's no world. I'd give I'll that be- up over the entree. I'd, I'd rather <laughs> have the dessert than the entree. I'll just tell you, I am so far in the appetizer camp. I can't. That's. Don't need the dessert. You, Don't care about it. You know, Don't what, you know what I would say Ian's going to go with for an app? Spinach and artichoke dip. Oh. That's what that's what he strikes me as. <laughs> What's your go-to app? Ian? What's your go-to all, app? All the apps? I do love mozzarella sticks, Tom. That's a good call. I love mozzi sticks. My favorite, my favorite food in the world is a plate of cheese fries. If I was about to go to the electric chair, give me a plate, a good plate of good cheese fries, and I'll. You I'll guys, see are, you you guys are hilarious. Time. You know what I'll say? My favorite app is like a good tuna tartare. You ever had a oh really good tuna tartare with a nice like chip, a little bit of soy on there, a little bit of good tuna tartare? Maybe I think we should rip you for that stupid. Are app you topic. are you trying to like just? 
tell us you are making $20 million this year? Like, is listen, this your way of speaking? Listen, that just in? because that I like you... tuna tartare and I don't like cheese fries doesn't mean. How many places do you think that we go to serve tuna tartare, Ian? I mean, it's coming from the guy who got a well done Wagyu burger today. I don't know. Oh, exactly. So, do you think I'm going to places that serve tuna tartare <laughs> if I'm getting Wagyu beef well done? No, I am not. I want your greasiest everything. I want mozzi sticks. I want um, I want onion rings. And then you know what I'm getting for dessert? I'm getting a warmed up brownie with chocolate fudge in the middle, two big scoops of ice cream on the side. And you know what? Let's throw in a pizookie to go with it. Save your tuna tartare for your fancy dinners with your caviar and your spinach dip. Ugh. Disgusting. Something spinach dip falls in the same category as the other two things you just said. Ooh, you're right. It's not fancy enough. Um, I don't even know. I don't know what else goes with it. Caviar? Never had either. Have you had caviar, Ian? Oh, my God. I know the answer. Have you had caviar? Yeah. Yes, I've had caviar. It's fantastic. Have Zach, you had escargot? Had yes, escargot. Also fantastic. Zach, have you had either one of those? Um, No. I don't know. Hey. The caviar, just looking at it, doesn't really do it for me. Just a blue collar guy. That's all. That's all you are. That's all. Do you want to answer the question? Appetizer, dessert, sack? I don't know. <laughs> this guy said tuna tartare. Getting crushed for tuna tartare. It's a great app. I don't know what you mean. It, tuna tartare is one of the craziest answers we've ever given in the show. I was trying to like let it go, but objectively. Let me give you a fried app. Let me give you a fried app. Okay. okay. If you want to come after me, calamari. I like a good calamari. That's fair. I'll give you calamari. That's good. Um, I didn't know we could that? only do fried appetizer on this show, but tuna tartare was wild. It's not wild, it's a great app. What percentage of restaurants do you think have tuna tartare as an appetizer? That's what I want to know. <laughs> the ones in the whole us. country, I mean, I don't know what percentage of restaurants do you think have fucking mozzarella sticks? A in lot. That? Nin- 95%. So That's not 90. true, 95% is <laughs> a high number. It's not all TGI Fridays, all right? There's plenty of places that don't have mozzarella sticks. I should have said, like... Can we go next yeah, question, go please? Zach. No, Zach, you, you didn't answer. You didn't even answer. I mean, this is off the rails at this point. But are you taking desserts or apps? You, I know. Come on. I really don't Pizookies. know, dude. Pizookies. Zach, do you like tuna tartare? I do. It's Thank good. you. It's good. Think of it. Think Speak of it. You could have Speak never had time. a pizookie at BJ's in Eugene. Think about that. No, Think I agree. I, I agree. We're not living in that world. No way. Yeah. Yeah. I got to go desserts. Yes. Let's go. Two versus two. <laughs> Is, are you, what are you like researching tuna tartare now? No, I'm upset. Many restaurants you, serve tuna I mean, tartare. finally, we. <laughs> Is, uh, Tom, I just want to get your take on one thing really quick before we wrap this up because we're off the rails. What do you think of this Yankees start? It's been pretty good. I thought you were asking about tuna tartare. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, I mean, it, it's the vibes are incredible right now. As I said, the vibes have been really bad the last 18 months, so it's, it's just amazing to have a fun Yankee team to be around. Tell me right one now. thing you're mad about. Don't really have anything. I mean, I you know, they're like you know, with it like ten and two, it's pretty easy to be happy. Get mad about something. Come weren't you else. weren't you mad last? Did didn't they get out to a crazy start last year too? No, not that I remember, but I you know, I didn't play the last yesterday. You 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 listen, Tom. If you're not going to get mad about something, then are you, you really worried, are you worried? Judge doesn't have the clutch gene after popping out with bases loaded. I remember this is just perfectly described Yankee fans. When I went, I got amazing tickets through John Boy to sit uh, at a potential. Real quick, real quick, you said describes Yankees fans. You are one of those. Like you are a classic Yankees fan. So well, you I are think in you, this group you're I, describing. I think you're going to hear the story, and maybe, maybe I feel like I'm not part of this group. But you know, okay. everyone can describe their own label to me. I don't self-label with these people. We had amazing tickets for when Judge was trying to break the uh, home run record. But it was one ticket. There was one ticket available. So I went just by myself. So I was just kind of, you know, you're listening around for the chatter. And he, had, if you guys remember, had just a little bit of a, a cold streak during right before he hit that the, the, the milestone home run. He didn't hit it for like two weeks. But it was still obviously one of the greatest seasons in American League history. And somebody behind me was like, this guy can't hit the homer. He's just not good. 
Someone <laughs> literally right when Judge was having one of the greatest seasons of all time. It's right. like, this guy's not good. Is he ever going to get it done? There was a whole conversation behind me. And I was like, this is one of the most insane and asinine conversations I've ever heard in my life that Aaron Judge sitting on 60 home runs is sucks because he hasn't hit a home run in 10 days. <laughs> I think it's a fair point. Last fan question that came through was if Ploof ever got me that wine. No, he didn't. Let's go to the uh, Sloan screen time today presented by our friends at Sloan. Sloan is the world's manufacturer of commercial plumbing systems. They're at the forefront of the green building movement. And they provide smart, sustainable, and hygienic restroom solutions. Ian, do you want to clip that out? We could clip that out and put it on socials. You know, we could have our social team tweet that at him. You know, because he's 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 Go claimed ahead. he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna get the bottle to you, and he still has it. Smart, sustainable, and hygienic <laughs> restroom solutions by manufacturing water fishing products, including flush meters, faucets, sink systems, soap dispensers, and fixtures for commercial, industrial, and institutional markets worldwide. To learn more, visit Sloan.com. I had a high one today, travel day. Mine shouldn't count. You and Masters. The, you can see in the picture what I used my screen time on. Uh, 519, uh, two hours and 13 of it was using maps. Dakota was getting a lot of uh, Dakota was getting a lot of Slack messages today, so we can't really blame him. I'm busy guy, That's man. It's my six, off day. And I gotta, I'm, always, I'm, that, I'm always on the clock, you know? 626 over here. Oh, oh. Day games will do that to you and a travel day, though. Yeah. Up early, too. 320 for me. That was a 320 for me. I don't know. I was with you most of the day, and I think I saw at least three hours myself. No phone calls today, though, Zach. I was surprised. I was nice. surprised. No businessman stuff going on. Uh, Tom? Eight hours, 23 minutes. I could tell by the way Tom started. He didn't like his number. He goes, uh, <laughs> that's not bad. We've seen worse. It's late. It's like that's like a full day. It's like midnight. It's yeah. Midnight. Technically, I my real time is like seven minutes because it's really it's after midnight. So, good point. it's a good point. It's a good point. It's that's good episode two hundred and three of the Compound Podcast presented by Connect Roasters. Go to connectroasters dot com. Use code Compound Club or code Compound fifteen on the website. All kinds of coffee get shipped right to your door. Connectroasters dot com. We'll see you next week.